My daughter had told me that uh, they reached out. I think it was uh, his wife reached out to my daughter and talked about doing an interview. She told me about it, and uh, I told her, yeah. How did you deal with it? Just what did you do? I mean, did you just say, hey, that's my dad, I love him? Because I always say this, kids want to love their parents. You got to give kids a real reason for them not to love you. I never questioned, you know, people said, didn't you want to ask him? And I'm like, no, it's just, it just wasn't something that ever crossed my mind. It was, I never wanted to sit down with him and ask him, like, did you do that? Or I don't know, it was never told to me, like, don't ever ask these questions. It was just something that was almost brought up the way we were brought up. Like my friends' fathers were involved. My uncles were involved. So I had my own little community that were like me. I went to school. The kids were different at school, but I never felt different because I grew up around, you know, so many people that had relatives in that lifestyle. Michael's a good guy. I get along with him. He's a friend of mine. We're both in the mafia. He was a captain. He became a captain. You know, Michael was a, a racketeer of mega proportions. That's a racketeer who was a good businessman, good money maker for the family, and that's what he was. I was a gangster, and we both know, acknowledge that. I was a, a gangster, and he was a racketeer. Uh, I was in the Colombo family, the first place I started off my career, so to speak, in the mafia. and. Uh, I even marched at the first rally they had. It was for his father, Sonny Frenchies, who was the underboss. And I love my father no matter what. I don't care what he was doing. He was a great father, good husband to my mother, supportive of me. I loved him. I wasn't interested in the other stuff. And, you know, I, I'd love to know how you feel about that. You know, I always say my father was my provider. He was my protector. And to this day, he is the one that, if I need to figure something out, I'm going to go to him. You know, um... We had a great relationship growing up. He was just normal to me. Like he always joked around. I mean, everybody that came in my house, my friends, they felt comfortable. Um, like I said, it was never outside business brought into the house. Yes, I've seen things, but my father had a way of making me feel like everything's going to be okay. I saw the interview myself and it was great. My daughter was spot on. Any woman who has a friend or a family member in the mafia and went through what women go through, our women. The ups and downs and all the shit that they put up with. Every woman should watch this interview because she nailed it. It's the way women feel and what they went through and the hardships that they go through. He did a great interview because we rarely hear the woman's version of what it was like being married to a mafia guy, not knowing if he's coming home, not knowing if he's gonna get killed. We get arrested, they're taking care of the kids, they're taking care of the family, they're fighting, and she nailed it. After my father cooperated, I had to learn a lot on my own, who to trust, who not to trust, why did this happen? You know, I had to kind of like do my own investigating and then also, you know, come encounter with some of the people that were in my father's lifestyle and try to understand, you know, how I could proceed, how I can move forward. With me, it's a little bit different because later on in life, you know, my dad gets violated on his parole five times, which means that my family's falling apart. My dad has basically five opportunities to be at home and take care of the family because mm -hmm. we needed him. How did you work on building that relationship? Because I know your father loves you. He and I spoke about it. He loves his kids. No doubt right, about right, it. Right. No doubt about that. Yes. I'm the one that's questionable. <laughs> he always says I'm the one that's like him. You can draw and get along fine, but I'm the one that's going to talk back. And I'm the one that's definitely going to voice my opinion. When I got to Arizona, after um, he came out of prison the first time, we started rebuilding our relationship. And like the first thing I wanted to know was why. It just like, really turned me off. My father cooperated, but it turned me off about the people around me. Like, even I didn't cooperate. I wasn't part of that lifestyle. You people, and I say you people as my father's crew and everyone, treated me like I was family, like you loved me. Like, there was nothing that could ever happen to me with you guys around. And then all of a sudden, it's like I'm thrown to the wolves. And all because of what he did, that's what got me to start to think. Like, this lifestyle is brought up on loyalty and respect and honor, but what did I do to ever disrespect someone? So all that love was fake because my father was the underboss. In a lot of incidents, 
you know, every part of her interview. My daughter's a sharp girl. She's smart. I knew she would hold her own. Michael was extremely polite and respectful, and I knew he would be. So that's why I gave her my blessings to do it. I'm glad I did. I saw the interview. I loved it. I think everyone should see it, watch it. I was happy that she was going to do it. Um, and it went very, very well.